would say my introduction to, to music, to rock music in particular, was my sister's boyfriend brought over the Alice Cooper Killer record, opened it up, and of course it has the, the shot with Alice hanging in a, uh, by, on a noose there. And there was just something about seeing that image that really compelled me. I, I knew that somehow I needed to be involved with this scene on some level, but I didn't really play an instrument at that point. And then just a few months later, I was probably 10 years old at this point, I saw a neighborhood drummer playing along with Black Sabbath Supernaut in his bedroom with one of those big Magnavox, uh, you know, uh, LP players. Side two, song one, Black Sabbath volume four, and that was my moment when I said, that's what I want to do, I want to play drums. And as it turned out, my uh, father had been a drummer as a hobbyist, so he had an old set of Ludwigs up in the attic, pulled those bad boys down, drum lessons, school band a year or two later, and then uh, it was off and running from there, you know. So my initial band was a, a, a guitar player buddy of mine, I think it was just two of us, and I think our, our bass player was also a guitar player who just played the, the, the low E string as, as bass, and that was our first, uh, you know, kind of bang around in the bedroom type of uh, experience there. Um, I want to say a couple years later is when we started, you know, playing parties and this kind of thing. Um, I think the first legit band that I was in was a power trio called Tripod. And again, this is, you know, 76, 77, something like that. We played almost all Black Sabbath songs. And that was my initial foray into live performance. A couple years later, you know, uh, I guess I turned pro at 15 when I was playing, you know, uh, dances and parties and even some clubs I would sneak into, that kind of thing. And this was all kind of going on in the Houston area as well, you know. Out of high school, I studied at the Berkeley School of Music in Boston and really delved into a lot of different styles of drumming, you know, Latin and jazz and funk, and really worked on a lot of that kind of stuff. Because I always liked those kind of chopsy players, you know, everybody from Tommy Aldridge and Neil Peart, uh, and of course Ian Pace with Deep Purple, uh, on through a lot of the, the, the fusion and other type of players. But eventually I kind of went full circle back into the rock scene, and I was touring in the mid 80s with a band called Diamond Romeo around the South and Midwest. And I heard about the ex-guitarist from KISS, Benny Vincent, auditioning drummers in LA. So I was able to you know, score Dana Strum's phone number from uh, Joey C. Jones, the lead singer of Sweet Savage. He gave me Dana's number, I called him up, made that connection, they agreed after uh, a, a rambling voicemail message that I left for Dana, or actually answer machine the message that I left for Dana. Um, and I, it's kind of a kind of a Disney story, you know. I got the van, packed it up, drove out to LA, and auditioned and got the gig. And that was like my first, I guess, major recording experience. Then, you know, the Vinny Vincent Invasion was one of the more dysfunctional, uh, uh, I should say, uh, infamously dysfunctional units uh, <laughs> of rock infamy in the '80s. Uh, but it was it was quite an experience, you know. I mean, Vinny, I always got along with Vinny. I think he's a killer guitarist, a great songwriter. Um, you know, we there's a lot of uh, hype around the band when, when the first record came out. So we, you know, we, we toured with Alice Cooper and then Iron Maiden for the first record, headlined on our, our second record. Uh, and you know, there's there's a lot of stories about how rough it was to record drums on that first VBI record, which were all true. Uh, and it was again, dysfunction is is the probably the best word, or dysfunctional is probably the best word to describe it. However. I wouldn't trade it because for that to be like my first major, you know, uh, uh, you know, foray into professional recording and touring and all that, everything since then has been comparatively easy. So I'm kind of glad I went through the boot camp of the Benny Vincent Invasion to kind of prep me for everything I would do over the next 30 years. When the Vinnie Vincent Invasion broke up, we kind of split and Mark and Dana went and started the slaughter. Uh, Mark got his option picked up from Chrysalis. Uh, I was supposed to go do that, but I, I think I was a little wounded from <laughs> all of the, the mental shenanigans that went on, so I just kind of did my own thing and wound up uh, with the Nelson brothers. So I was in Nelson for a few years and uh, we had a nice run there. Uh, when that whole scene kind of fizzled out in the early 90s, I would kind of return back to my you know, drummer's, uh, drummer kind of roots, uh, got into the drum clinic circuit, did a lot of touring throughout the 90s as like a solo drumming guy. Uh, hooked up with Gary Hoey around 2000, was with him for five years, and somewhere along the way managed to reconnect with Mark and Dana in Slaughter around 03, 04, something like that, which was a very different experience, a really good experience. 
Um, and uh, just been, you know, uh, playing pretty solid ever since, you know. So I uh, joined Lita Ford's band almost four years ago now, and uh, it's been quite an experience. You know, again, I keep feeling like I'm going full circle, you know. Uh, you know, this is a killer band. Uh, you know, Lita Ford is iconic, uh, fun to work with, you know, and, and now we're, we're, as we're going out and playing, especially on a lot of these package uh, shows with other bands from the area and all that, we're playing a lot of the same venues that we did even back in the, the day kind of like, you know, for you know, not only some of our, the old fans, but also a new generation of fans as well. So I, I feel like this kind of music, this, you know, hard rock as we know it and we've loved it back then is now sort of like its own, you know, legitimate genre out there. And, uh, you know, we're working all the time, uh, having fun out here. Uh, and we're going to you know, work on a new record and, and keep the touring going. So uh, no complaints on this end, man. Having a great time.